Hey guys, how's it going? So I want to tour you around our garden today. This is the end of May garden tour and it is a full sun, really hot day. Like it's supposed to be close to 100, but it's now or never because tomorrow we have 65 mile an hour winds coming and our roses look so good right now that I thought, you know what, after tomorrow, I don't know what anything's going to look like. In fact, one of my chores today is to stake all of our delphiniums. I haven't done that yet. And if I don't do that by tomorrow, I'm going to have delphiniums laying on the ground. So anyway, I think that everything's looking pretty good right now. I did make a list of all the containers I still need to plant and all the annuals I still plan to put in the ground, as well as all of the drip issues I need to either test or figure out and the list is long, but it gives me lots of things to work on and lots of videos in the future for you guys to see. The thing is, and I know a lot of you guys have had this same issue. We had a really long, cool spring. So all of our spring stuff, there's a branch hanging down. All of our spring stuff looks amazing still. I mean, almost into June and our pansies are just in their prime, making it extremely hard to want to pull anything out because usually by now, they look incredibly tired. They wilt down every afternoon. And so it's easy to take them out and put something in that likes the heat. Um, but it's kind of, we're getting to a point where I'm gonna need to just start clearing stuff out and putting my summer stuff in. So you will see a lot of spring plants still in their containers. And that's just what it is this spring. And it actually, after this whole windstorm comes through, it's gonna drop our temperatures down over 20 degrees temperature drop in one evening. And then it looks like it's gonna steadily climb down into the 60s in June, which is nuts for our area. Usually we're close to 100 and we stay that way for the rest of the summer. So I'm not gonna complain about it at all. It'll be very nice, but it's just different. Every year you just never know what to expect. I did tackle this brick circle area. We did not film a video because we're, we have so many projects and so many videos backing uphill to share with you guys that some of the stuff we just thought, let's just get it done. We'll show you in a tour. So this is the before shot, just got it planted. I did put the firelight hydrangeas in last year. I decided it would be fun to start adding more shrubs and perennials into some of our annual planting areas just to take up space because we have a lot of areas that we put annuals in and it gets to be a lot when you're changing them out, out all the time. So I wanted some permanent planting and I think this is gonna be beautiful to have like this crown of hydrangeas toward the end of the season. I underplanted with Plain the Blue Salvia, this one right here. There's a honeybee on it right now. Um, now I had this same salvia in here last year and I enjoyed it so much. It did so well that I did want to repeat it. And I do like to do that sometimes if I really particularly liked something. But the difference this year is I put Truffula Pink Gomfrina in here, which is this really cute little round pink spheres. This is a nice example here. Now, if you were following us last year, you saw how our Gomfrina grew up front. One plant <laughs> gets huge. In fact, I overplanted really bad up there um, because I didn't realize how big they got. So it really goes to show like I used almost 30 less plants in this area this year than I did last year because if you choose things that you know will get big and take up space you just don't have to plant as much. Now along the base here I have a angelonia called cascade white. Isn't that pretty? This one has more of a cascading like sprawling sort of habit rather than strictly upright like the other Angelonias that I've had experience growing anyway. So anyway, I think this is gonna be a really fun area to see fill in. Um, kind of moving on toward this area, more spring pansies. Now these are looking a little bit tired. So I just, I want them all to look like this though. So I don't feel so guilty pulling them out, uh, but this will soon come. I did pull the pansies out of the window box already. Um, so that one I just need to plant up. But I just wanted to show you an update on this container right here. Purple fountain grass, Dahlia, I think it's, is it Delina Cancun, Aaron? Do you remember? Does that sound familiar? I don't remember. I think that might be the name. A uh, lamb's ear, which I've already cut back bloom stalks. It shot up big bloom stalks. Cut it back to right here. And then it shot out two brand new fuzzy little shoots. Uh, Super Bell's called Strawberry Punch and a snow, snow globe snowstorm. Is that two different plants? I don't know, this is a Bacopa. Put the name on the screen. It was in a video earlier on, but it's doing great. Everything looks like it's just bulking out, which I love. Got a couple of herb planters here. In fact, the oregano and the rosemary and this one garlic plant wintered over in this container. So I popped a clematis and some other things in here, some chives. Then we've got a pot of spearmint right there. I do want to go, I think this direction because I've been loving this view and I really want you guys to take this in. Erin, I think you should stand like right here. I'm gonna get out of the way. I think it's so pretty. 
like when you pan around and you can see like the pink salvia in the back flower but it just like draws your eye and then you can see the different layers i have planted nothing in this area yet this year so this is all stuff that's come back and i'm really loving how it's taking shape it takes a while for flower beds to kind of get that look and i mean i i do expect that over the years it'll develop even more but one thing i'm really happy about are these lemony lace elderberries. These, I was sure that I was kind of putting them in the wrong spot. Often, not often. Sometimes I plant stuff and I'm like, ooh, I know it's not gonna like it here, <laughs> but I'm gonna try it. Like this is the kind of light they get all day long and I think the tag says fold apart sun. I thought, well, we're just gonna give this a, sh a shot. And they like this spot. <laughs> they really have done well. Now they do get like a little, oops, pine cone. They get some, a little bit of morning sun on this side, very filtered like this all through the day through the canopy of the pines and at the very end of the day just the front side of these get a little bit of sun uh, and it's just enough because they are really looking good and i think that they're a really great alternative almost to a japanese maple don't you think they kind of have that japanese maple look to them the very lace leaf but they're much tougher in our area anyway i did plant a japanese maple in between the two pine trunks and it's doing okay um, I think it's got a few broken branches, or not broken, dead branches I need to go in and prune out. Um, just those little fussy things that we, you know, do throughout the season. Wildberry hookra here and autumn frost hosta all the way around this bed. Oh, before we swing around, you got to look at this here because I planted these apricot foxgloves last year. And this is a variety that blooms second year. So I didn't get any blooms last year. And this year we've got some glorious bloom stalks. Japanese umbrella pine right here I planted last year and then I just transplanted this hopscotch hookerella out of one of our containers from up front right in our parking area I had to use those pots yesterday that my hookerellas were in so I had to take the hookerellas out and get them planted and then they're so big that you can just pop one in a flower bed and it gives you impact you don't need to have a big drift of those if you don't want or if you don't have the space for it I did pull out the calicarpas the beauty berries that I had planted here. They just didn't like this spot. I had transplanted or replanted two of them already. So I had tried the first batch of three, had to take two out, replanted those two, and then ended up just taking all three out. I think they like more acidic soil than they get in our area. And so that area, I need to clean up the tulip leaves, which are just now like looking like this. This is typically, we wait until they look like this to cut them back, typically. Uh, and so I'll clean all of that up and then I'll figure out three really pretty things to put in here. I'm thinking even like Arctic fire dogwoods, um, you know, there's a lot of green in this area. So I might choose something with some purple, but the red branches might be beautiful in the winter time. So anyway, I've got some thinking to do on that. Salvia back here, backed by a ton of iceberg roses, the shrub type right here. Really beautiful. I mean, this whole area. And then the Venus dogwood, you can see it kind of towering up above. I hope you're able to see everything. It's so, we usually wait for a part sun or not part sun, overcast day so that everything is in the same light and we don't have harsh shadows. But with the wind tomorrow, it's just one of those things. Right here in front of the gazebo, like I said, I haven't planted a single thing in this bed. We've got lamium, not yet anyway, this year. Obviously I've planted something in the past. Uh, lollipop crab apple. There is a Diamond Lake Hosta, the Lamium Serendipity Alliums, which will bloom middle to late summer, and then the Carding Mill Rose. So I did want to talk about this because I, this is my, one of my favorite colors. This is a David Austin Rose, and I do have a lot of Atlas Roses as well in my garden, which are in the same color family. They both have that peachy color, a little bit different shape blooms. I mean, you just, this, this, you just really can't, I don't know. There's nothing like this, except I do notice that the branches on mine are not as strong. You can see right here. See this right here? They are plenty hydrated. It is not a water issue. I just have noticed that their stems aren't as strong as the at last. So something to consider. Although I do like these for arranging because I can get them to easily cascade over the side of my vase. In fact, I just did an arrangement that I really love. We'll pop a picture up on the screen. Uh, utilizing these roses and they were very easy to manipulate instead of a really stiff stem. So there's some pros and cons, I guess, for you. Um, I did plant some Veronica in here that I figured out in both sides that it does not like a ton of moisture. I didn't realize that both of these beds are on drip and they were getting hit by sprinklers too. And I didn't know that. 
um, until the very end of the season and so some of them rotted out so I'm, i am planning on fixing that issue i haven't yet that's why i haven't replanted but i really did it's like the purple illusion i really would like that back here i also planted some inkberry hollies which like acidic soil and i thought well i'm going to try this they both they're an evergreen this one looked completely dead but it just started pushing new leaves so i gave them holly tone I'm going to see what they do. I mean, I know they don't look like much now, but I will probably give them this season unless I figure out something different I wanna do and let them kind of recuperate because wouldn't that be amazing if I could actually get these to live? Something that likes acidic soil, it makes me always feel accomplished when I can do that. On this side, well, right here, I guess I should point out these are pyracantha spirals that I have not shaped yet. And I didn't really wanna shape them until they bloomed. So we've got blooms on them now. And then when I shape them, they will look more spiral-esque. Spring plants still below that still look pretty good. And then we've got a couple nine barks back here. This is the Copertina. Oh, I can't remember. Is that the Copertina? Do you remember? We're on the screen. Yeah, we'll put it on the screen. We're going to have an awful lot of that. Um, Boscobel roses right here. There's five of them. Look at how gorgeous. The scent of this one is crazy amazing too. Um, I have a couple sunflowers. I have had sunflowers planted nowhere near this area. So there's this right here and this one right here that I'm just gonna, I don't, I'm gonna let them grow. <laughs> I know it's kind of weird right in the middle of the roses, but bless their hearts, they're just going for it and they look really healthy. So I'm gonna let them go. Uh, right over here, North Pole Arborvitae Spiral. This is where the ash tree was removed. Was that last spring, Erin? I think it was, wasn't it? Anyway, this is where the trunk was, so I need to cut these back and then I'll be using some um, brush and stump killer to kill out the, these because I can't have these keep coming up in here. They're way too strong and aggressive. Um, we've got some more serendipity allium. See, I've got lots of space here. I need to fix the water issues first and then I will come in with some more perennial, hopefully Veronica, probably a few annuals in here. But my linden tree looks a heck of a lot better than it did last year. Last year, it fell over in our hailstorm that we had in May, and then the um, leaves all got shredded, every single one. And so where every leaf was shredded, there was brown around each one of the leaves. In fact, I think I took some pictures. I'll look. Um, anyway, it looked like that for the rest of the season. It was a huge bummer because I had a brown tree backed by my brown gazebo. Everything just looked very brown over here, and it kind of bummed me out. Let's go look at this bed. This is the only time it's really in the sun Ooh, I need to get the hose out. Hold on, my hydrangeas are drooping. This is really the only area of our yard that's inconvenient to have to water because I have to snake the hose all the way through our fireplace area and around, but that's okay. One of these days we'll get a faucet put somewhere over here. Be ideal if we had one like tucked in right by that euonymus, which is looking very healthy this year. Okay. Oh. Shame. Shouldn't have started the tour until I looked around. This bed, uh, we do not have our drip system on a grid system. And we've noticed that this is our only bed that we really deal with flow issues. And sometimes the drip system just doesn't cover things very well. So I deal with a little bit of this. I did come in though. This bed is just so much more full than it used to be. I came in with these bluebird nemesia right here. Usually they're like a cooler, they like a cooler temperature which this is only in the sun until, oh, I don't know, maybe like noonish or so. And so I'm hoping that they, it's an experiment to see how they do in the ground. But I've really amped up this area with hostas. I've got a bunch of white foxgloves coming up. Like you can see a stock here. There's one blooming there, back in here. There is a hydrangea. This is a little quick fire. No, pinky winky, pinky winky right here. Planted it a couple years ago in the dark after I got home from a garden tour in our local area and I was so inspired I just had to come home and plant something. Okay, just a few more, sorry. But I did plant these, our spearmint hookahs right here. Gotta give them a little bit of extra water every day until they're established. But I just really wanted to keep this bed full of shorter things um, instead of tall because I love standing back right here and like looking through. Like right now, it's a little bit harsh because of the sun, but usually like first thing in the morning and in the evening, oh my word, when the sun's going down behind the vegetable garden, it is, it is gorgeous. It's one of my favorite views 
of our entire garden, especially now that we've got more varied um, plantings. Now this sprinkler right here comes up and then it kind of sprinkles over the very front part of this bed. Last year I put impatience in here, just like the ones you can buy in the four pack and they did pretty well. So I'll probably do that again, but I've been kind of careful about what I put in this area. One, because we really do need to get the water system figured out over here before I add too much. Otherwise I'll spend, you know, 30 minutes a day standing here with the hose, trying to make sure everything stays watered. Uh, anyway, I'll just leave this here for now. I should probably go turn it off though because my hose has sprung a leak. See that? I need to repair this. The weeping willow looks really beautiful right now. We need to trim it a little bit so we can see Hebe again. It's kind of a constant chore, but we should head this direction. Flower bed right here is looking awesome. The hostas are just so pretty. I could not wait to see the hostas looking in their prime again. After last year's hailstorm and how they looked for the rest of the season, I just craved seeing nice looking leaves. Um, the columbine in here is gorgeous. If you look through the bed, it's a huge patch. It self seeds itself around, which I don't even mind because I think it makes it look very kind of magical in this area and less structured, which I think I like to have a good blend of that in a garden. I like all my hedges, but I like a jumble as well. Looking across Versailles there, the lettuce is huge, looking awesome. Now our boxwoods are looking a little bit better. We did a very, very light trim on them. Um, they pushed some more green growth, but do you remember what they looked like just a month ago? They were bad. I mean, they were like this right here, like just dead tips, but the whole thing, even the sides. So we aren't going to be shaping these up very hard, probably for the next couple of years, because I really want to let them have a chance to rebound. We'll lightly shape them just so that there's some structure, but we just have to let them just hang out for a while and rebound. And over here, this is a old like heirloom type rose. I always have to ask you guys what the name of it is. It's beautiful, kind of vivid pink. And then um, this bed, I haven't really actually done a whole bunch to. There is some bindweed in this bed. It's really hard to get rid of. Do you guys have this in your area? It climbs through everything. It's just horrible stuff. So I try to keep up on it. If I can keep up on it early, I feel like I get a better handle on it. But some areas just, it runs away and I don't have, I don't know, I can't keep on everything all the time. So it's looking pretty good, but this fills up with black eyed seasons. So the whole area, you won't even be able to see soil here as well. I planted some uh, echinaceas here last year. There's a Russian sage there. And then I planted these actually by our oak trees over there and they were getting ready to take those out last year and I really wanted to save these because they smell just like grapes. They're an iris. Also, it smells like, like grape. I remember as a kid, my, when I was sick, I would get grape Dimatap. That medicine, did you get that, Erin? I loved it when I was a kid. So this reminds me of that smell, exactly. But the leaves are gorgeous. The white and sagey green gets really pretty. So I really want these to kind of establish and naturalize and fill in this space here. A Little bit of salvia, and then this is the pink profusion salvia. Isn't that gorgeous? It blooms forever, a really long time. Then we shear it back to about, you know, right here or so, and then it blooms again later in the season. I have more of it out by the barn, and I wanted more of it on purpose because I want to put some of this in other areas of our garden. Right behind it, I have Morden Blush Roses. So look at this, look at how delicate. Like just the softest shell pink. And I really actually leave all of these. I don't deadhead many of these because they form the biggest rose hips and they're beautiful, like orangish red, huge rose hips. And I like to use them for wreaths and arranging um, for fall and winter time. Right behind it, there's a hawthorn which I planted, it was sick at the nursery, I planted it here, and this was the first year that I feel like it really like is taking hold. It was so full of bloom. I think I took a picture of it, uh, but it was just beautiful. And it will get, I think like 20 feet tall, maybe 15 foot wide was the, the size of this one. So it's going to fill in this space right here, and that's what I hope it does. Um, just kind of like this blue spruce, which looks like it's struggling a little bit, but it's putting on new growth, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, this is a fat Albert, which will also get 15 feet wide. And I really wanted to create back here a screen a little bit to create more of a private feeling 
in here, which we'll get there one day. But this bed we've added quite a bit to. Winecraft black smoke bush. Doesn't that look awesome? Erin, don't you feel like this is the best year? Well, every new year your plants get bigger and stuff, but I feel like this one sat all of last year and really didn't do much. Because I remember planting this when Russell was just a baby, which means I was just, I was just pregnant with Benjamin. So it's like over two years old. Everything is in terms of when Benjamin was born and when we adopted Russell, <laughs> kind of like my timeline. Anyway, um, yeah, I feel like this is just now coming into its own and I planted a bunch of the firefly peach. Is it peach sky? Anyway, planted these last year and they've gotten huge and they've bulked up and I don't deadhead these because I feel like the spent blooms on them are every bit as pretty as the fresh blooms and I like to use these in arranging, they last forever. I've got a Jubilee Celebration Rose right here. Really pretty, kind of like a, I don't even know how to describe that, like a tropical-y looking pink, but it'll fill in this area, four by four. And then the Midnight Masquerade Penacee, uh, Penstemon right here, and then Phlox. This is Pink -a Dot, I can't remember. It honestly, it came back a little bit weak and it's because I think I'm not giving it enough sun. I think that I would need to stay on top of trimming this a little more often to keep those plants really full. But I'm really wanting to fill in this area as a whole. It's the shape is gonna change a little bit. It feels so magical, doesn't it? Like all of this, like I hate to trim it because I just love the form of these trees. It makes me feel like I'm in the South. I've never been to the South really, but this is like what I imagine. Anyway, I've got some limelight hydrangeas under here, which honestly would perform better with more sun as well. They just kind of, they bloom, but they're not like a huge show under here. So I'm learning a lot about, you know, how much light something truly needs and to perform really well. I do have another Diamond Lake hosta in here backed by an Oregon grape in there. Beautiful red fall color on that Oregon grape and it is evergreen. So it maintains its foliage through the year. Uh, we've got Brenner right in here. Planted these kind of late in the season last year. I thought they would get too much sun, but they look like they're thriving. Um, then this area. This area is kind of our major hole, I guess, right now, uh, because this is where the oaks came out. We would like to mirror a walkway that's pretty much as wide as the one in the corner garden there. So like right in here, big enough to get the gator through, which means, you know, where the previous pathway was, that's now going to be flower bed. Um, and then we are going to be edging this whole thing with brick. So the gravel is going to be pushed out a little bit. It'll all be edged with brick. Then at that point, I think I'll feel better about planting the trees. And clearly, I mean, I would love to have planted the trees earlier in the season before they broke dormancy, but we just didn't get to that project. And I really don't want to plant them until the brick edging is in because only then can I properly measure because I need everything to be pretty precise with this hedge of trees, there are four of them. And I want it to be equal, equidistance. So anyway, they still sit there, we water them every day um, and I, they should be okay. But the rest of this flower bed's really pretty. We just recently planted some phlox in here. Um, irises are still blooming, which is really fun. And then the centauria right here is always a beautiful show. So centauria, this is also called Jupiter's beard. Uh, we will cut it back here and a few weeks after it's done blooming, then it flushes back again. I've got a Beyond Midnight Caryopteris tucked in right there. We planted that in a video and that usually picks up midsummer and then blooms for the rest of the season. We've got some geraniums, hardy geraniums here, backed by a poet's wife rose. Erin, you should get close on that. Look at how beautiful those are. Kind of tucked in with the, all the other perennials. Oh, and the mock orange is blooming. I didn't see that yet. Look at this. I think this is a mock orange called Snow White, I wanna say. Planted it last year really late when it was hot and it kind of defoliated and I felt really bad for it because <laughs> I didn't plant it at the proper time. So I'm really happy to see it looking so good. Uh, Benjamin's area is kind of blank right now. We had like random planters in here last year that we've cleaned out. I would like to do some more fun stuff for him in this spot. That's why I've left it open. Um, I am trying to find round concrete stepping stones. Nobody seems to carry, carry them in our area and I need like 10 of them. I don't want to do squares, I want to do round. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for. But I want to put in some fun stuff for him back here. He actually loves to come in here, uh, even though there's nothing planted on it and he wants us to sit in there with him. So I need to still plant something around it 
and then um, for some shade and then do some other things. Anyway, those will be some fun projects for later. And then going this way, this is where the flagstones were. Um, Aaron and I do plan on doing a project. I kind of anticipate, Aaron, when do you think that's gonna happen? He just rolled his eyes and went, <laughs> yeah. We kind of got our ahead of ourselves. So you might just see this looking like mulch for now, which is totally fine with me. It looks tidy. Um, blue fescue looks better than it ever has because we actually sheared it back for the first time. All the other years, we didn't really bother to do that. So it always had kind of a brown tint to it. Um, cat's pajamas nepeta right here, backed by some daisies. Those are Daisy May. They're full of buds. I'm dealing with an iron issue in this bed. You can see clearly on, I've got some Mary Rose roses in here. And like this one looks good. That one looks good. Those are okay on the end, but this one, look at this. I mean, it's so iron deficient that it's starting to burn. And I, I've put iron tone on it. And I think there's just kind of a problem in here though, cause look at my hydrangea. It's like this whole section right here. There's something in the soil. Um, cause hydrangea is chloros, showing chlorosis. And then so are the um, ladies mantle on this side. The ladies mantle on the end are still nice and green. The leaves are, but the leaves here have this look to them right here. See that? That's weird. Green veining and yellow leaf tissue. So I don't know what's going on in this spot. It's always, there's always some little thing like that, but this here is very beautiful, I think. This penicetum gets about this tall or so, beautiful seed heads on it. And then the lamium just maintains through the whole season. If anybody knows what this is, please tell me. I planted this last year and I cannot remember what it is. I don't have a tag. So these are the blooms. This is what the way the leaves look. Somebody let me know, please, because it's beautiful. I'd like to have more, honestly. Um, I did more bluebird nemesia in this area as well as some wicked witch coleus. We actually took a little bit of a break because the camera was overheating. So anyway, back to our tour. This is, I think where we stopped it. But I wanted to point out the Woo La La Hostas. I planted these here last year and they're just so beautiful. I planted the other Hookerella out of the containers uh, that I just cleaned out right over there. I think that's a really pretty blend um, along with this Japanese maple. And then I've got a Clematis right here that I cannot remember the name of at the moment. Anyway, I just transplanted this. I wanna say this is a Brother Stefan. Not sure, but let's run through here. I haven't done much in the gazebo area. I mean, I moved our Japanese maples from the greenhouse back in here and they're all doing really well, but I do intend on doing some potted things on this rolling cart and on the table out here, but it's just, you know, one thing at a time, at least it's clean and tidy in here. Um, and yeah, we actually don't use this gazebo very much at all. Okay, let's go this way because the Empress Wu hostas in which we just showed you these in the hosta video. Again, I'm not sure if that one's gonna come out first before this tour or not, but um, these are looking amazing. So these three, one, two, three, I planted a couple years ago. And then these three back here, I planted last year. So you can kind of see the growth difference, just adding one extra year of growth here. And they are on drip, they get consistent moisture. And that's the thing with these big hostas that I didn't realize they really do need consistent moisture in order to get that big, massive size. So we've got a beautiful Japanese maple in here and you can kind of see through to the cottage garden around the chicken coop area there. Uh, right behind you, Erin, I just planted those double winky blue columbine. Still have a few blooms on them. And you might remember in that video, I started spraying these with Midex because I usually get mites on these horribly bad. And so I've done that a few times and they are clean. Like I have gone through so far this season with no mite damage on those. So I am, I'm really happy about that. So I wanted to let you guys know the update. These are containers from last year, pansies and all, haven't even touched them this spring. We've got a Gembox Inkberry Holly, <laughs> it's kind of short. It didn't look like that when the ivy was little, but this is glorious. Like big curtain of ivy, so pretty. This is uh, called Gold Child right here. So I need to get around to, I think I'll pull the pansies out clearly and I might pull the centerpiece out and do something a little bit taller here just for a different look. Uh, that'll come in a while. And I did not get around to trimming these. These are the last boxwoods that didn't, the last boxwoods on the place that didn't get shorn in time. But with our decrease in temperature, I think I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot and I'll just trim them up lightly. My intention is to have these be round spheres and they're clearly not right now. They're just like wild woolly things, um, but they're healthy. So that's great. 
haven't planted these up yet. Thought we would maybe like run through here quick. We just did a tour of this area, so we'll just walk through um, out in front of the chicken coop and then we'll go show you the formal garden. But the Baptisia is just starting to bloom and look beautiful. The Zephyrine roses, climbing roses, I still haven't started to prune and train yet. They're still just as they were. Uh, but I just love this back here at the Japanese maple and the Brunera, which is still blooming at the end of May. We've got a hedge of Carex. And then this right here, this hosta and hookera that I planted in here last year is doing really great, which surprises me because that container, I actually got in there the other day and um, noticed that it was somehow plugged on the bottom and the, because the pot's sitting straight on the soil. And I, so I took all the drippers out and I just left it alone and it looks like it's doing a lot better. Had I not noticed that, I think I would have maybe lost those plants to rot. Um, but this is doing really great, Baptisia. I might try to put a cage or something around this for tomorrow's windstorm because I would hate for something to happen to this plant. And then this right here, oh, I was just noticing. In fact, I took a picture from right in here and posted it on Instagram this morning. It was this view right here. It was of this rose right here with the hookera blooms and then the clematis in the background. And that's a brother Stefan clematis right there. These are lady gardener roses which somebody commented and said, boy, those don't look as apricot as I think they, they are supposed to be. And I do think soil chemistry can slightly alter the way your blooms look. And that could be what's going on here because they definitely open up more pink, but they age out with a lot more apricot. See how much more apricot there is in the center there? But they're all doing great. I did treat these with iron tone earlier this spring and they're all greening up beautifully. Cat's pajama nepeta still going for it. And my yellow pansy still going for it. And the front of the chicken coop looks pretty much the same as the last time I showed you. We do have an umbrella up in there. That is my, that is my quick fix for shade for the chickens. In fact, it's usually like it's pretty cool in there in their coop. I have a fan running oscillating all day long with the door and the back window open. So there's a lot of airflow in there and they hang out in there a lot of the day. Um, but then in the afternoon, the umbrella actually shades it really well. And then there's an ash tree right in front of me that shades it from the hottest part of the day. So, so far we're getting through pretty good and the chickens seem to be okay with that. These are the oh so easy peach cream, peachy cream roses. And that's about how tall they get. I love the color of them, so pretty. And see, this is really why I wanted to show you these plants because all of these will be gone after the windstorm. All of those petals, they'll be all over the ground, all over everywhere, all over the mulch. Um, but right now they look just perfect. Uh, the Indiglo Girl Salvia. So I did want to talk about this because if you want a perennial salvia that acts a little bit more like an annual salvia, I love this one because I feel like it's got the biggest bloom stock of all the perennial salvias. It gets really tall and it blooms for so much of the season. And this is, yeah, last year was the first time I ever planted it and I've really enjoyed it a lot. So I'm a, I'm a believer in that variety. All right, so let's go back here. You can take a look at the firelight. That's what we put back here, right, Erin? <laughs> firelight hydrangea hedge we put in last year. It's all looking really, really good. The interesting thing about this bed, we've noticed every single year whether or not we put annuals in. This was previously a bed we put just annuals in, and now, now we have transformed it a little bit into a lower maintenance, like less planting sort of area. But every year it starts off to where it, like we get great growth, great growth, great growth, and then it gets like fair, and then it gets a little bit worse over here. And I think what's going on is that the root system from this Scarlet Curls Willow, I think is just sucking all the moisture from the end of this bed. So I did go in late last year and I put in extra emitters so that these two on the ends would receive a lot more water. So far they look really good. So I'm hoping that they eventually catch up and we don't have a hedge that looks like this in the end. Who knows? But I did plant a few spearmint hookers under there. This is kind of our, like, not junk area. It's our supply area. We've got our fertilizer tank back there as well as our lawnmower, which we don't have room for in the barn anymore, and stacks of bricks. See, his Aaron got a bunch of them on sale, and so he snagged. There's like, I don't know, six pallets back there, five and a half pallets for whenever we tackle new projects, and it's kind of nice. If we want to do a brick pathway project and we want it to match all the rest of our bricks, we know we've got extra back here. I really never, have we ever really gone through the beds back here much? 
We've got a grapevine here. It's actually on an arbor and it produces, well, you can see, I usually post pictures of it when it's bearing its fruit, but they're just everywhere, loaded. And I really don't do much for trimming on this thing at all. I just let it go and do its thing. And it does great every single year, huge clusters of grapes and Benjamin loved it last year. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him this year. Every year it gets more fun because he like understands more and more about where things are and what things are meant for. And that's really fun. Angelica right here that I planted. If you want Angelica, just know that it's going to want to spread everywhere and it gets massive. Um, I planted, I think one, did I plant one or two in this spot right here? And it was just like this little tiny thing, like, you know, like this big right here, a couple leaves. And it just looks so like bold and beautiful. And I saw the picture of the blooms on the tag and I thought, oh, that'd be interesting. Well, it like creates a hedge. And if that's what you want, that's a great plant. And it's totally fine back here, except for it starts to block the sprinkler from the grass. And that's kind of what's going on right here. We've got some damage. I need to come in and kind of shear all this off so that the sprinkler can, can water properly. Um, here's another one. This one I did not plant and it's here. So that kind of shows you like it's gonna start spreading itself around. I planted a couple of peonies from just roots last year in a video. I planted three in this spot. Nothing came up last year and I thought, oh, that's great. <laughs> I did all of that and there's no plants there. Well, two of them emerged this spring, so I'm very excited. They're a white bloomer. Um, and then I did not get the third one, which I think was right here, which is fine. You know, I've got some ground cover Veronica going on right there, and that's just great. This whole area is like a lot of plants that were here when we moved in, um, and just a few here and there that we've added throughout the last few years. White iris is here, right in here. The alliums are just kind of starting to go for it back here. This is the latest that they've ever done it. So the taller ones are the ambassadors that we added in last fall. I had previously planted globe masters, which you can see are almost done. So maybe they have a little bit of a different bloom season, which is great. I didn't know that. I thought they'd be all blooming at one time. Globe masters ended up being too short, which bummed me out because I was wanting this look. I was wanting to look above the boxwoods and see this really fun little, you know, sphere, purple spheres coming up. Um, so that's why we added the ambassadors in. Now we were having water issues that we didn't know about earlier this spring. So I think they came up a lot weaker, especially on that corner over there. They just didn't get enough water and I didn't realize it. Um, so I'm hoping that they all thrive and at least live through this season now that they are getting water and that we have a really fantastic show next year. Although this is pretty fantastic. I'm really happy with that. Now I did trim these. I've been trimming a lot of my shaped boxwoods with hedge shears like manual ones and as opposed to my hedge trimmers i did prune these a little bit late but i also think that on my electric hedge trimmers while well, i'll still do that on my straight hedges like this because it's just faster i just don't have the time to manually prune all of our boxwood hedges there's just yards and yards and yards of them i do think that it bruises the leaves like it takes the plant and does this with the leaves and i think you have a um, higher likelihood of having yellow or burn tips because it's just raking those leaves and not making a really clean cut, if that makes sense. So with a lot of our shaped boxwoods, I've been using those shears and having really excellent results with that. It's a little more controlled. It makes me go slower, so the shapes end up a little bit better too. Um, so anyway, yeah, usually they flush back though with a little new layer of green growth that kind of covers that anyway. But I think it's looking pretty good. I've got to show you the Atlast roses over here in the corner, they're amazing. Everything we planted in this bed's coming back and doing great. All the hydrangeas, not much growth to them yet. We'll show you later on. Serendipity alliums, black lace elderberry. This one I cut back to about here every single year and it gets massive. There's one in full bloom. I did not prune that one on purpose because I wanted to show you guys what it looks like if you don't prune it. Um, so, because usually I like to keep them a little bit more in size control, but that means oftentimes I cut off a lot of the blooms. So I left this one, which probably much to my neighbor's dismay, I will go in and kind of shear that up a little bit. They have a net up right here because they play a lot of tennis. And so it catches all of the tennis balls, which I appreciate. So I will go in and probably clean that up for them. But anyway, I think this is pretty grand. We're going to be showing you some of our neighbors just down the lane from us. They've got this huge hedge of these and they're the most spectacular looking plants. 
I have really nothing going on there because we have had water issues even with brand new drip that I ran to this area. It hasn't been watering right there. I don't know what the deal is. But these are the six at last roses I planted last year. I did not deadhead these last year or prune them at all. <laughs> nothing. Like if you look in here, you can probably find they're just like they bury last year's growth. I can't even really see it. Anyway, they look amazing. And so you can see the difference between the carding mills, which are a little bit softer peach, they're fuller cupped, but you can see the strength of these stems is a lot better. So you kind of have pick and choose what you kind of want the look of your plants and the, what you want the function to be. I like to have both so I can use them however, but this is Tucrium right here which is a beautiful uh, perennial along with this color of rose. So this one will get sheared back. You can see that it's about ready to be sheared back um, once it starts to flop a little bit. In this bed here, we have the Stand By Me Clematis. Is that right? I always wanna call it Falling In Love Sweetly, like the anemone. I get these two mixed up. Still haven't staked these up since the last time I showed you, but they're looking awesome and they look like this all season. They just bloom and bloom and bloom. I think on their tag they say they bloom like late spring, early summer, and then maybe again later in the season, but mine just go all season long. That's what I've experienced and I just love this plant. It's amazing. I've got a climbing rose and some other things I want to plant in this area, but the reason um, we planted our new uh, blue spruce over here is that eventually when it's mature it will reach over here. So I didn't really, I didn't, it looks weird not to have it like right here. Like this is where I would want to put it, just like my initial reaction. Um, but I know in the future, I'm gonna need more space for it. And this is gonna be a really beautiful evergreen at the very end of our lane, because this is our lane here, which brings me to the containers, which are just amazing. Like I have considered pulling the grass out of the center because of how beautiful just the geraniums look in it. But Aaron keeps telling me it'll be beautiful in different seasons. Like enjoy them right now, looking the way they do with the geranium being the star and then enjoy it later on when the, the grass is the star, which is really, I love that. Um, being able to have multi-season interest out of these containers, the Bordeaux and the lob, everything, everything looks like it's just filling in gorgeous. This container right here, when I took this trailing rose vein, it was the third, let's see, it's this one right here. It is the third pot from the end I accidentally broke, broke the root ball um, more than half, in half. Like it only had about this much root ball below its plant. And I thought, well, I'll just pop it in there anyway and see what it does. And it took hold and it's doing great. These are all on drip. I've never supplemented, watered these, except for the first day I watered them all in and then they've been on drip ever since. And we are spraying the supertunias every week with BT to keep the budworms off. And then they get fertilizer once a week as well. And that's the maintenance that they're gonna get all season and I just love them. I think they're beautiful. All right, I think we should head to Versailles. We missed the bloom time on these. These are always really beautiful. You can see like a couple, like of the straggler blooms. These are all purple and they're all just full of iris a little while ago. But you might remember we had um, those pavers, those gray pavers here. This will also be lined with brick soon. So our friends came and they pulled all of the pavers up to the very end, right to the fence here. Uh, and then later on, they're gonna come and get all the pavers from inside of Versailles so that we can replace it all with brick. I really wanna show you the alliums in this corner. These are pots with still have hellebores and pant violas in. I need to swap those out. The lettuce is looking great. About ready to pull those out and get ready for some annuals. Look at the alliums in this spot. Look at this. This has been such a fun area here. These are globe masters right here. And I gotta not touch honeybees. They're usually just loaded with honeybees. But look at how massive this is. That is enormous. <laughs> They're amazing. Um, and we planted these in just little groups. So like a group of three, a group of five. I think I have a group of so seven right in there. Um, and I just really like the look. I did plant, let's see, we've got three Queen of Sweden roses in here. So nice soft pink. You might be, I don't know which ones you can see better, but 
Um, they're really doing well. My stand of poppies that I planted last year, these were all in four inch containers. Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? And so those are filling in great. I've got Kodiak orange dervelas back there and there's a totem pole grass that gets really tall. My June snow dogwood was a late plant last year. I put, I had something else there. What did I put there? Do you remember? I think it was a pink flowering dogwood and it didn't do well. I think it died. So I took it out and put this in, but it was pretty late in the season, um, but it's doing well. It bloomed white, really pretty. Uh, and then I did plant my foxgloves. I grew from seed. You may have seen that video. So that's how they're looking right now. They're bulking up, looking great. All right, let's go up here. So this area is about to get very interesting, which means I probably won't do an enormous amount of planting up here. Um, not permanent planting anyway, because if you saw our video where we talked about our new land up here and kind of our plans to, uh, to join the two properties, this whole gravel lane that's right here, um, it will be removed as well as all of this. All the fencing um, will take the boxwoods up, everything will go, and then our lawn is going to extend out into the new property with flower beds like this on the perimeters and maybe some islands with flower beds, but it will join the two properties together. Um, so that means I probably will cool it on permanent plantings up here because I don't want to have to move or give away plants. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have friends and family come over and just dig out what they want up here um, before we get ready to do that. And we may relocate some of the plants ourselves if we there are certain ones we want to keep. Um, so that means I'll probably do some sort of quick growing annual for this area. I had some credible sunflowers here last year that did great, um, which I think I need to do a little pruning. Our ash tree canopy is kind of weighting down a little bit. Last year, this was in much more sun. So anyway, I don't know what I'm gonna do up here. It's likely it may end up just looking like this all season, which is okay to have areas like that. This flower bed is looking really good, I think. The gophers have been leaving it alone for the last little bit which is lovely. I haven't had to deal with any gopher messes for a while. Um, I'm going to come in with some caladiums right here, which we have loads of. We just got them in. Um, and so I want to plant some right in here. I am going to contact the company. <laughs> I might get around to it this year to get the proper setup to get her running. Right now she's collected some nice rainwater and some leaves and such. I don't know, it doesn't bother me. I know it bothers some of you guys to see fountains that aren't running. Um, but it's just one of those things. It's just another thing. Like I know when it's running, it's something else. I have to make sure it's filled every day, which there isn't a really convenient hose to fill this one up. And that's one of the factors. I'm like, oh, this one does not have a very big reservoir. And I have to string the hose all the way around to get it over here to fill it every day. <sighs> right now it's so low maintenance. <laughs> looks great. All full of junk. Uh, but I just planted these silver gumdrop hookahs here. These were out of our hookah planters up front. There's coast to coast hostas. There are some, I think these are water slide hostas, some hardy geraniums, which actually do really well in shady spots. And then I've got a bunch of this foliage left. This is from our leucogym, leucogym, the summer snowflake bulb we planted in here. So I'm guessing these will just stay for a little while longer and then we'll be cutting all of that back and it'll have a little bit more of a clean appearance in here. Now these next beds are in full sun. Atlas roses, look at those. Now, I don't know how it is, but I have two here and three here, and somehow this rose is not planted right here. This is how the, the swoop should go. Like, how did it get planted off? I do that almost every time I plant something together. I don't know if I just, like, I don't take into account, like, I should plant them where the root balls should go instead of what the plant is currently shaped like, because I think that's what gets me wrong. What do you think, Erin? I don't know. <laughs> My uh, inattention to detail, perhaps. Anyway, um, so my it's looking very good. The Globemaster alliums, because they're in more sun and heat up here, these ones are just starting to go out of bloom. There's a little bit of color left on them. Nine barks in here, as well as a limelight hydrangea. I had an evergreen planted right here, which I'd like to replace with something. It did not thrive. The root ball broke when we planted it, and it was a late plant anyway. I was planting it so that it looked good for a tour, <laughs> and I was in a hurry anyway. Um, so that one didn't thrive, but that's okay. I kind of want... I don't know if I want an evergreen there. I might want some really beautiful ornamental tree of some sort there, so we'll see. See, look at these pansies. 
and the tulip leaves they're just starting to brown but they've lasted for so long so much longer than normal i do have plants in the greenhouse ready for these spots ready for the edge here ready for the edge up there and i just haven't had the heart to pull these out yet but their time is coming very soon um, in this flower bed here we've got some hardy geraniums oh we should pop out quick here and show the uh, climbing rose because they really are looking pretty and these containers are looking really pretty as well and i'm really nervous as to what's going to happen to these in the wind tomorrow but they're looking nice and full really starting to thicken up this is a climbing ro rose called the generous gardener right here really pretty like pale kind of pink these are a couple that i'll probably save i'll cut them way back i'll dig them up and put them somewhere else when we take all of this out this. yeah this is um like coming from a rootstock here this is like that dr huey parent rose whatever i need to cut this out this should not happen in my garden the dark red coming in amongst my really soft pink beautifully colored irises i love this this is one of my favorites that really soft peach color we've got some wild rose hookahs and then this spot right here i'm dealing with a gopher i don't know if it's the same one but there was a mound in our grass there's a mound right here and there's an actual hole underneath this hosta. Look at this, like I can, I can stick my hand inside this hole. It just barreled through part of the roots. Super frustrating. So anyway, trying to keep up on that. I tried to flush them out with some water the other day and the water just disappears. I had my hose in that hole forever. And I think the networks in this area of gopher runs are so extensive, the water just goes, I don't know. So one day our ground caves in from the amount of water I put, that's what happened. I planted these ferns this spring and I'm really loving them. I can't remember the name. I'll have to see if I can find the tag, um, but I think it's a really pretty uh, structure in here. And then this is our new area. It's still in a little bit of shade since we're still morning, but this is the best year for this Japanese maple so far. I think it's looking really great. We've got the black pearl hookahs with the acarus, um, Ogon acarus. I think it's what it's called, that grass. Uh, some foxgloves blooming. This is the Anna's Red Hellebore, which, I mean, not only are the blooms beautiful, but the leaves are really beautiful, the design on the leaves. I haven't got around to uh, trying to mask the AC unit, but I don't even really notice it. There's so many beautiful things going on in this area. You've got a climbing rose right here. Um, and then these are some of the delphiniums. There are no gutters on this side of the house. We had a rainstorm, like this is the only stake I had at the moment. Um, we had a rainstorm and it was coming down and just beating the heck out of these delphiniums right here. But I need to come in today and try to straighten these all up and get them all properly staked so that they don't get ruined tomorrow in the wind. But they're gorgeous, aren't they? Look at this color. I think they're just, I mean, so beautiful and they filled in this area wonderfully. Now I really need to get better about coming in earlier on in the season and properly staking stuff. In our last garden, it was so protected and something about our soil down there, things just grew like crazy and I would have stalks this big on my delphiniums. I never had to stake them because they were so strong. They're not quite the same here. We're a little more exposed um, and they just don't grow quite as robust. This planter is doing really well. We've got the osteospermum uh, pink and then the bacopa and the bluebird nemesia. Everything's looking really good in it. I still haven't hooked this one up on drip yet, but it, all the drip is there. Uh, the paprika rose is just going out of bloom. And then we've got some salvia here. Foxgloves that I started from seed this winter kind of went in this area. And then a woolala la hosta. What else? We've got the hostas here, which we put in very early. These are the seducer hostas, and they've really gone through the ringer with wind. Um, it just barrels through here. There's nothing to protect them. So I'm hoping that one day when our arborvitas are actually tall and creating their screen and the red point maples are big um, and this boxwood hedge is more established, I'm hoping it creates more protection right here for these plants because there's, you can see they're a little tattered. Of course, they're brand new plants too. So it's probably a little hard for their root system to bring up enough water to really feed the whole leaf. So they tend to want to brown and tatter a bit the first year anyway. Um, but I still think they're looking pretty good. Silver gumdrop, hookah is there, and some ferns. 
so let's just head toward the vegetable garden. I'm trying to recoup these um, spheres. I did trim these, but one year they got trimmed, not by me, but they got trimmed to where um, the guy who trimmed them trimmed them in blocks right here. <laughs> Instead of like leaving them circles and letting them touch, um, they were like rounded on the top and the sides, but then they were flat on the sides so that it left air. And you can imagine, I was kind of like, uh. So it's okay, I'm just letting them kind of be fluffy on the sides and we'll try to recoup their shape and they will eventually. Just one of those things. The west side garden, there's not an enormous amount that's different over here. You know, I planted up the urns, um, planted the delphiniums, which are shooting up brand new stalks. I am getting ready to plant in here. We have cut the foliage back of the tulips. I have a lot of white blooming annuals. In fact, right here, check this out. This is a little view, preview of things to come. Look at this. I'm hoping to do this today. I was hoping to do it last night. So I loaded up the, the cart. They've been sitting here for the last little bit, but I think these are gonna be gorgeous. Diamond Mountain Euphorbia. So the last little area, let's walk through the vegetable garden. These right here are called Ambridge Rose. Look at that. They're just so delicate looking. You can tell, like I always go, go toward that color of rose. The colettes on the arbors are looking amazing. They're just about done um, with their first flush. They've got a lot of buds on them, but I'm gonna have to come through and clean up. I'm sure the wind will do a lot of it for me though to clean up some of these spent blooms. But you can see right here, they're a little bit smaller than the traditional English roses, the blooms are, but they've got that same kind of full cupped appearance. They smell really good and they're just, they're beastly. They wanna grow so quick. Um, you can see the ones on the other side. One of them is almost reaching the top. And then we recently did a vegetable garden tour, so I won't spend a lot of time, but everything is looking really good in here. I've got um, garlic will be harvested in about a month, a little over a month from now. Cabbage is starting to, like this one's ready to harvest right now. Potatoes are looking excellent. Onions have a little bit more time on them, but everything's looking very good. Like I can tell, you can tell the land and sea, I added land and sea compost for the first time this fall or this spring and the biotone fertilizer when I planted everything and everything's just like, it's just enormous. Um, broccoli, like this is my best broccoli year ever. You can see it's starting to be eaten by some things. So I have been, I sprayed BT out here. Um, and that's the first time I've sprayed anything in this garden. I noticed right here, like I could see a little bit of damage. And then I found a little green caterpillar right behind it. Anyway, I came out and sprayed BT on all the cabbages, all in the broccoli and the Brussels sprouts. But you can see on the Brussels sprouts here, look at, they're starting to form. Those will be our Brussels sprouts. It's very exciting. I've got to figure out how to make Brussels sprouts, Erin. <laughs> I've never really liked them, but I, they're interesting to grow. Here's a couple other beds of potatoes. Uh, the peas, these are organ sugar pod peas. They're looking amazing. See, like I said, when I planted these, they're not a technically a pole pea, but they need support big time. So this wire A-frame trellis, this is from Gardener Supply, is perfect. They just kind of cling to it and it keeps them upright. And check this out. First one of the season for me. Oh, it's a little baby, so it's really tender. Mmm, yum. Benjamin checks the strawberries every day. He likes green strawberries as much as red ones, I think. And we have to like really make sure we have our eye on them so that we actually get uh, red strawberries because he would eat them all green. And then the Colettes again. All right, guys, so I think that's gonna be it for today's video. That was a lot. I did try to spend a little bit more time going over individual plant names um, in each area. So I'm not sure how long this tour was. So if you watched the whole thing, thank you for sticking with it through the whole thing. It really is a fun time of year and I really anticipate it just like starting to explode with growth. I mean, it, to me, a lot of the areas have, but I know the potential of a lot of the stuff we planted, especially in terms of annuals. You'll really see a lot of activity with that coming up very soon. So anyway, hope you guys are all having a really great day and we will see you in the next video.